My name is Gaspar Twajirezu. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Rwanda Space Agency, which is a government of Rwanda's institution in charge of uh, using space technology to advance socioeconomic development of the country. So our space uh, program journey started uh, around uh, 2018. At that time, we had a space working group, uh, which was uh, a group of people coming from different institutions. And the goal was to analyze um, the space uh, ecosystem across the world and see how uh, space uh, benefits can be applied to different sectors in Rwanda. Uh, the conclusion of that space working group was to establish uh, the agency uh, that later uh, became the Rwanda Space Agency. Uh, at that time, we had also started building different relationships with different countries. Uh, and uh, towards uh, the end of uh, 2019, uh, we had uh, a partnership with, uh, with the Japan. And uh, around that time, this is where uh, we launched our first uh, demo mission, uh, CubeSat, that was launched in space. And that was meant uh, for Rwandan engineers to start uh, looking at how space technology is developed, uh, but also at the same time build that confidence that uh, space technology is not uh, the privilege of just a few, but also that uh, in Rwanda we can also develop uh, those technologies. In uh, 2021, uh, this is when uh, by law uh, the Rwanda Space Agency uh, was created. Uh, since then, uh, we have uh, been uh, building uh, uh, different uh, uh, legal instruments uh, to make sure that uh, our institution is properly established, to make sure that it can work with uh, different uh, agencies here in Rwanda and abroad. Uh, we have also been building capacity. We have been growing uh, as an agency. We have been growing our team. We have been building uh, our, our partnerships. But also, most important, we have been uh, building different projects with uh, different sectors. Uh, currently, we have uh, been supporting uh, decision-making in different sectors uh, of our economy. We have been working with uh, agriculture. We have been working with uh, disaster recovery and management sector. We have been working with urbanization, uh, climate, uh, and uh, other different uh, sectors. So far, we have built uh, more than 20 applications uh, that support decisions uh, in those uh, other areas. Uh, but we also have other key uh, projects uh, that demonstrate that uh, even if we are talking about space technology, it's not um, something that's totally up there. It's something that also can support uh, different activities uh, here uh, on Earth. Uh, the policy is built uh, on uh, four pillars. Um, the first one is build. The second one uh, is grow. Uh, and then collaborate. And uh, lastly, inspire. Uh, we want uh, to uh, build capabilities uh, as an agency and also as a country, uh, both in terms of human capacity, but also in terms of uh, infrastructure uh, and uh, the products that we can develop. We also want to grow um, as, a, as an agency, we want to grow as a space community here in Rwanda, uh, but also we want to make sure that uh, we grow in terms of sophistication, uh, in terms of uh, products that we can develop uh, and be able to also grow uh, the impact impact that uh, space technology can have on different sectors uh, of our economy. But of course, we cannot do this alone. We need to make sure that we are also building proper partnerships uh, here in Rwanda, but also across the world. Uh, already as an institution, we have been able to build uh, relationships with uh, other space agencies uh, in Africa and uh, elsewhere. Um, and also we are part of uh, different uh, international organizations uh, because uh, as an agency, we are also uh, in charge of uh, uh, making sure that Rwanda is uh, participating in those international fora. Uh, another pillar, uh, of course, is to um, inspire uh, because if you look at uh, other space agencies across the world, one of the most important aspects uh, of them is to make sure that uh, we use uh, space technologies to inspire, especially, especially the young ones uh, among us. So, for instance, we have different programs that we do with uh, universities, with uh, schools. Uh, one example that I can give is that uh, every year we have what we call Space Week, uh, which is um, um, a week or more 
a long uh, event uh, that brings together different uh, universities and uh, and schools and communities in startup communities to reflect on how space technology can be used to, to solve everyday problems uh, because sometimes uh, uh, when we hear about space uh, we think that it's something that's too complicated that's out of reach uh, but during this week we uh, make sure that the students understand that um, uh, we already use space technology every day even if we don't normally think about it as space so for instance if someone has ordered food on Vua Vua, uh, Vua, Vua is built on uh, maps, and those maps are powered by space uh, technology. Uh, if uh, we do um, uh, agriculture, if we check uh, the way that all of these things, uh, we use them every day, but they are powered uh, by space technology. So those are the four pillars uh, of our policy, uh, and we want to make sure that we use that to to grow in all aspects. Uh, for instance, if you are talking about space, uh, there are different uh, uh, areas that we call streams. Uh, there is the upstream uh, segment of space, which is uh, what more people are familiar with. These are satellites, these are uh, all the different assets uh, that are uh, uh, in space um, with the near and uh, deep space. Uh, and then we also have the downstream uh, segment. The downstream segment is that segment where uh, uh, we use satellite data or uh, space data to derive insights that can help us uh, uh, advance some of the uh, the sectors here. So uh, we have chosen to start with uh, the downstream segment, uh, and in that downstream segment, we use uh, space technologies uh, to support the priority sectors uh, of our economy. Uh, for instance, uh, there are uh, applications that you have been building that support uh, uh, districts like Huye. Uh, there is a product that we are building with them, and this is going to help them track uh, their imihigo. So this is an example of how, uh, even if it's a complicated technology, but technology that can help us uh, in everyday life. It can help uh, users like farmers, but also at the same time, it can help uh, decision makers and uh, policy makers uh, like the mayor of Huye, who would want to see uh, how uh, the Huye city is growing, who would want to see how uh, the people are doing, uh, and would want to see uh, how uh, all the different aspects of the district uh, are managed. So this is one of the examples uh, of the downstream uh, segment uh, that we are developing. So we have um, uh, different projects that we have uh, been building since uh, the establishment of the agency. Uh, I can uh, uh, cite uh, two projects uh, that we are working on. And the first one I can talk about is the teleport. Uh, and many of us have been seeing uh, an antenna uh, that Rwanda has invested in. And this antenna is a ground station uh, that's located at uh, uh, our teleport in Ilgua Magana. Uh, and um, a ground station uh, is an infrastructure uh, that's obviously on ground, uh, but that supports um, a satellite in a space. Uh, satellite operators uh, always need to talk to their satellites, uh, primarily to check on their health, to see how they are doing, but also to give it uh, to give them commands and uh, also uh, sometimes download uh, data that they are collecting uh, in space. Uh, but that's not the only asset that we have at uh, the teleport. We have our antenna, uh, but also at the same time, we want to develop the teleport uh, to make sure that even if there are other operators uh, who want to uh, use uh, to put antennas uh, in in that in this region to be able to operate their satellites, we want to make sure that they can also come and establish at our teleport. At the teleport, we have uh, basic infrastructure such as internet, um, electricity, data storage, office space, and other amenities uh, that uh, satellite operators uh, may need uh, to be able to to run uh, a ground uh, station. Uh, the teleport, we want to use it as a way uh, to position ourselves uh, as a hub for ground uh, station uh, infrastructure uh, within the equatorial region. 
So the government of Rwanda uh, it has invested uh, in the teleport because we want to be able to cover the infrastructure gap uh, in the ground stations that exists within the equatorial region. So this is why we were able to uh, establish uh, that uh, type of infrastructure. Uh, and uh, we use it, for instance, for our antenna, we use it um, under a concept that we call a ground station as a service. So meaning all the different operators who want to operate their satellites from this uh, region, um, we give them access uh, to the antenna and they are able uh, to use it to uh, talk to their assets uh, in space. So that's one uh, project. Uh, the second project that we have uh, is what we call the National uh, Geospatial Hub. Uh, and this is um, uh, an infrastructure that we have uh, developed to house uh, geospatial data of the country. Uh, and we want to do this because we want to make sure that we build efficiency uh, in terms of how uh, the different government institutions uh, use, procure, and, um, and house uh, geospatial data. But also at the same time, we want to make sure that we are enabling our space ecosystem to be able to use that data to build uh, applications. So we have already completed uh, the infrastructure phase uh, of the, the GeoHub, uh, as we call it. Uh, and we are uh, now integrating uh, to make sure that um, users can have access at different levels. Once the infrastructure and um, uh, all the accompanying um, uh, technology is complete, we will have uh, government uh, institutions have access to the data, but also at the same time we will have uh, research community and the startup community uh, be able to get that data uh, be able to build applications and be able to serve uh, our communities. Uh, and uh, on top of that, we have uh, made sure that uh, uh, we partner with um, uh, the suppliers of the different geomatic uh, software products. And this is to ensure that uh, anyone, uh, any government agency, uh, any um, uh, university uh, or uh, startup uh, that would want access to that type of software can have can find it um, can have uh, those licenses in an easily uh, accessible way. Space technology can be used to solve uh, everyday challenges that we face, and we have been using space data to uh, build uh, products for uh, different sectors in Rwanda. Uh, one example that I can give is a project that we have been working together on uh, with uh, uh, the uh, Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, and we have built a comprehensive map of, of uh, the soil in Rwanda. So meaning uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, farmers uh, and um, other actors in the agriculture sector can use the map uh, to look up uh, their plots, to look at the different um, uh, farming areas, and then they can um, understand the property of the soil and therefore uh, be able to know uh, what type of crops are more suitable for that area. So this is an example of how um, a space uh, images and data can be used uh, to solve uh, a problem that we see uh, every day. Uh, another uh, uh, project is in urbanization because uh, when um, uh, you have certain images that look at uh, entire cities, uh, you can uh, be able to make applications on top of that. And these applications can help uh, entities like the city of Chigadi or any other city to enforce uh, the uh, construction sector and to know um, people who are building, when they are building, and uh, ass assisting the permitting process. So these are examples of the applications that we can build, but there is, the potential is limitless uh, for space technologies to uh, be used in our everyday life. <music> Our space ecosystem uh, is uh, growing, even if uh, we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, but as a government institution, uh, we want to be able to lower the barrier of entry for those um, uh, uh, ecosystem members. So this is why we want to call on uh, uh, the students, uh, the enthusiasts, uh, the startups to come and consider the Rwanda Space Agency as their home.
So if you are curious about how space technology can be used to solve everyday problems, or if you have an idea, please come to us and we will brainstorm together and uh, build a solution together. Mm -hmm.